Lord good to us. Amen. A lot of things I have on my heart about the family. And uh, I wholeheartedly believe that God instituted the family. You believe that? Say amen. Now, uh, before I start, I got some statistics I'm going to read you here in a few minutes, but, uh, you know, this is probably the most mixed up generation that I can remember. I've been preaching nine to sixty years, and uh, this is the most confused generation that I've ever seen. And uh, and people sometime through life, and and I'm going to say this, you can call it a disclaimer or whatever you want to. Sometimes people get their lives mixed up in marriage, double marriage, triple marriage, quadruple marriage. And children without father and children without mother. And uh, you wonder what's going to happen. How is God going to unravel it all? But the one thing I have learned, some things are in His hands. And we have to leave them in His hands. You cannot straighten every situation out. And there are situations that you find yourself in that you can't straighten out. You just have to pick up the pieces and go on. Amen. How many of you Bible readers have we got here tonight? You got your Bible with you? Raise your hand if you got your Bible, because I'm going to need some Bible readers here tonight. uh, As you, uh, Brother Mike, is passing these uh, out, you know, God is still ahead over everything. I lost some of y'all right there. You can just quit on me. I said, God is still head over everything. Amen. And uh, I trust that He'll help us tonight. We want to first read out of uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. And we're just going to read three verses there. And uh, how many of y'all believe in the Holy Ghost? Amen. I believe in the Holy Ghost power, don't you? And uh, I need, I'm need i going to need some Scripture readers here in just a few minutes. Uh, so, But while you're turning, uh, I want to uh, uh, read to you some statistics. Uh, some of these are current. Some of these are a little bit older, but they still bear... The fact that the, our family as we have known it in our American culture is fastly degenerating, amen, to where uh, we don't have the family of father and mother and children like God intended for us to have in our American culture. Uh, I, I've got this article. I get, a, uh, I get a magazine every month. Maybe every week, I forgot. It's uh, it's called Midnight Call Magazine. And over in, toward the back of it, it's got this uh, uh, several pages that's uh, entitled World Focus. And I uh, picked up this one. Married couples have dropped below half of all U.S. Ha- households for the first time according to the Census Bureau. And uh, a fifth of households were traditional families. But I want to tell you, God intended for it to be a man and a woman and children. Marriage. Marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled, is what the Bible said. Amen. But uh, there's some things I want I want to share with you uh, this afternoon. Uh, the the American family continues to break apart. The marriage rate was at its highest in the 1950s. There's a woman by the name of June Carbone. She's a law professor in the University of Missouri in Kansas. 
in Kansas City. She authored a book, and uh, she begins to uh, explain <coughs> uh, I don't know what y'all can do with what she said here, but you'll have to take it. She said, employment, instability, depresses marriage rates. Did you know, do you understand that the government encourages families to be single parent families? I lost y'all there. She said the reasoning is this. I can support myself and my kid, but not myself, the kid, and him. And that's the mentality of this generation. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, they had a saying, if you make your bed hard, you have to lay in it. Deal with it. I lost y'all here. Retreat from marriage is bad for society because it means less security for the children. Non-marriage on the one hand and same-sex same marriage on the other hand is destroying the fabric of American society. It is the decline of the marriage. Amen. Satan's attempt to invalidate God's principal laws for mankind, if he can destroy the family, he will destroy the church. And if he destroys the church, he will destroy all mankind. It's his master plan. And uh, I, I was reading this article out of this Midnight Call magazine, and, and they wrote this, and they said the most shocking news is that divorce is more common within the evangelical camp, those who claim to believe in the Bible, than all of rest of America put together. Man, 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 that ought to... Awaken somebody. Amen. But uh, there are several things that causes the uh, breakdown of the family. I, 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 uh, I told you this morning I want to talk to you about God's order for the family. Amen. There are several things that causes this breakdown. There's a long list of statistics that I could give you. And uh, almost everybody sees these uh, statistics sooner or later. But one of them simply states moral corruption on television, in movies, and at the newsstand. Hello. The covers of most popular women's magazines today like Glamour and Cosmopolitan are more explicit than the Playboy covers of the 1950s. And it's acceptable. How did we get here? What was the breaking point? Amen. There's widespread acceptance of homosexuality promoted by the gay lobby, abortion and the barbaric practice of partial birth abortion. Amen. Y'all understand that? The pervasive pornography industry. I said this morning, and I, I, I need to correct what I said this morning. It's a five billion dollar industry. Five billion dollars a year industry in pornography. Amen. But I went back and, and checked the statistics and it's twelve, ten to twelve billion dollars a year industry in pornography. When people get hooked on pornography, it is an obsession that it, 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 it destroys their reasoning, the rationale of what's right and what's wrong. Amen. <coughs> the, uh, the immorality and sexual transmitted diseases is destroying our marriage in America. It's unraveling the family. The United States has the world's highest divorce rate. Twice of what it was in 1960. 
marriage rates are falling while cohabitation, that means just shacking up in our term, is on the rise. And not only in the world out there, it's becoming more acceptable in the church world. Hello? The number of unmarried, cohabiting couples have increased dramatically over the past four decades, and the increase is continuing. This trend is hardly surprising in light of Hollywood's consistent mockery of the traditional family. The national catastrophe of out-of-wedlock birth in 1948, only 3.8 percentage uh, of all women in the United States weren't married when they gave birth. 1960, the number rose slightly to 5%. The number today, and it was in the news just this past week, the number today is 41% of women that give birth to babies is unmarried, out of wedlock. Now you tell me, we're not in line for God's judgment on this country of America. Somebody say amen. In eight of America's 40 largest cities, unmarried women gave birth to more than three out of every five children. Out of wedlock births used to be a source of shame and carried a social stigma. But now... They're greeted with a little more than a shrug of the shoulder. So what? Big deal. Surprisingly, according to the CDC uh, agency, amen, that is the, the disease uh, center, amen, for the center for disease, amen, they said teenagers account for only 23%, only 23%, of current out-of-wedlock births. The vast majority of unwed mothers are old enough to know what they're doing. Un unwed births are surging among women ages 25 to 29. Boy, we are in a mess, aren't we? Hollywood is setting the standard as more and more unmarried female megastars their children. And America is hemorrhaging from within. God's going to judge us. God's going to judge us. Amen. I've got some other statistics I could read to you tonight, but time won't permit us. So uh, let's go to the Scripture. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Starting at verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Amen. He said, be ye followers, that is imitators of me, even as I also am of Christ. Then he said, keep. Amen. That word keep, you find that many times in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. That word keep is a military term. In the original, that means guard it. Stand guard. Hold on. Amen. Hold fast to it. Amen. And to the ordinances, that is a handing down of the doctrines. Amen. Which you have received or I delivered unto you. Amen. The head, the head, the head. 
the head of every man is who? Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. All right. I don't know. I don't know what the... You can be seated. I don't know what the oneness or Jesus only people do with that verse. Amen. It's very plain that they're all there. Amen. In, uh, in John chapter 16, and uh, you can flip over there, that's on that uh, chart. Amen. If you want to turn over there, you can. John chapter 16, verse 7, reading down through... Uh, uh, you don't have to stand because we're going to re- be reading a lot of Scripture here tonight. Nevertheless... I tell you the truth, it's expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged now. Look at verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when He, huh? When He, the Spirit of truth, which is the Holy Ghost, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show unto you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. And all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Now as you look at that chart that you're holding in your hand, I want you to notice the lines that are going away to the outer edge of that that, uh, piece of paper. You see, God the Father and God the Son, God the Holy Ghost has a better outview than anybody else. God knows all. God sees all. God hears all. There's nothing He does not see, hear, or know. He knows everything about you. Amen. Even the things sometimes that people think that nobody else knows and they are hid, God knows. Amen. Now, uh, we're going to come down to the husband. Amen. Now, uh, Paul tells us in in uh, the re- reading that I gave to you in 1 Corinthians 11 that the husband or the man is the head of the woman. Amen. And But Christ is the head of the man. Amen. But now, I want us to, uh, if you will, I've got so many scriptures here to read tonight that I need some help in reading some scriptures. Amen. Can uh, who will volunteer? Got some volunteers? All right. Good. I was waiting on you. Amen. In uh, in in First Peter chapter three. Now I want you to read uh, the first six verses, and then we'll come back to uh, uh, the verse seven later. Because verse 7 is very important, stands alone by itself. Amen. Brother Silas, if you will, uh, I want you to, uh, uh, let's see, can you take most everything I'm going to give you in in book of Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26, 27, 28, and then in chapter 2 and verse 15. And uh, let's see here. And then in chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, if, if you'll take those, I appreciate it. Uh, some more Bible readers here. Amen. Volunteers. All right, Johnny B. Uh, I want you to take, uh, let's see here. I want you to take Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, uh, verse verse uh, one through three, and uh, 
then four separately, if you will. If you do that. Let's see. I need somebody else to read here. Who's a good reader? All right. Well, we just read ourselves. In, uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, and uh, we'll just read down several verses. I need somebody else to read here. Uh, Sister Carter, good. If you'll take Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, those first four verses, we may split them up, but you ta- you be ready with them. In chapter 5 of Ephesians, beginning at verse 22, Wives, submit yourselves unto your Is that word in your Bible too? A three letter word, O W N? You mean that don't mean everybody else's? <clears throat> Just means yours. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as, Christ, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, now, amen. We're still talking about the family. Husbands. Amen. Uh, uh, Sister Wendy asked me a while ago, said, you're going to get them men folks tonight. <laughs> amen. Husbands. <laughs> amen. Love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless! Let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Amen. Now we'll come back to those other verses after a while, sister. Amen. But I want to tell you, we are living in a difficult generation in our American culture where the family is so confused. People don't even know what a family is anymore. <clears throat> Amen. But let's go back to the book of beginnings in Genesis chapter 1 and uh, verses 26, 27, 28. Really? Male and fe- Well, did y'all understand that? Is that difficult to understand? God created male and female. What? Yes. All right, just step over there to chapter 2 and verse 15. Military word, keep, to guard it. It was, now listen, it was Adam's responsibility to keep the garden. If Adam had a fulfilled his responsibility as husband, amen. The the uh, the serpent would have never been able to beguile Eve. 
Amen. It's the fact that the husband, come on here, the husband failed in his responsibility to keep the garden. Now, I want to say something here this evening. Amen. Men, we a lot of times, y'all hear preachers talk about the women, what they're lacking, what they're not doing, and what they ought to be doing, and how they ought to keep house, and how they ought to do this, and how they... Amen. That's probably all true, but I want to tell you something. Man has failed in our society of America. Man has failed in his responsibility to keep the house, to keep the home. Amen. Uh, I remember Brother uh, Gene Huff years ago, amen, when he was here, he, uh, he, 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 he uh, told us that the word husband is taken from two old Anglo-Saxon words, house band. And it's the man's... Oh boy, some of y'all looking awful funny at me. It is the man's responsibility to keep the devil out of your home. And man is failing in his responsibilities of the house. Amen. Somebody said, well, my wife wanted to do this, or my children wanted to do this, or Johnny Jr. wanted this. Amen. It's a husband's responsibility, amen, to see to it that the serpent does not have, amen, a place in the household. Somebody say amen now. Amen. And, uh, in, in this chapter 2 and verse 18, uh, did I give that to anybody? It don't matter. Let's read it. Amen. Thank you, brother. It is getting kind of warm in here. I'm about to sweat up here myself. In chapter 2, verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Amen. I will make him a help suitable to man intellectually, morally, physically, as his counterpart. Now, on your chart, I want you to notice one fact. That the size of the circle for a husband and wife are the same. Hello. The same. They are, we are workers together in the work of God. And sometimes the areas of a man's life that is lacking in certain characteristic or qualities, that wife comes along as a help meet and makes up what he lacks. Come on here. Somebody say amen. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh. Instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said when he woke up, Lord have mercy, what a beautiful doll is that. I ain't never seen nothing that pretty. I mean, he, he had access to all the birds of the air and the fish in the sea and the animals of the forest, but he ain't never seen nothing this pretty. <clears throat> I lost y'all right there. Amen. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Now, I, I hear some men Pronounce that as woe man. That's a mispronunciation of the word woman. And I've seen some men that was far more sorrier than that woman that he married. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now, I, I, I read these verses because I want to tell you this. Woman is said not to have been taken out of a man's head to lord over him. 
nor from his feet be to be trampled on by him, but from his side to be equal with him, from under his arm to be protected by him, and from near his heart to be loved by him. Amen. I said amen. Does anybody here believe that? I want to tell you. I need to be careful here. I know. I understand. Men and women are different. Did y'all ever figure that out? They are different. <clears throat> they think different. I got a lot of men say amen on that one, but I didn't hear any women say amen. amen. <laughs> they think different. But you see, God made it that way. A mother is protective of her children. And you want to get riled up. Fool with that mama's baby. Man, man, man. But I want to tell you, God made it that way on purpose. That that woman will keep those children and take care of them. It boggles my mind in our society today. Help me here now. Amen. That women can take their newborn babies and flush them down a toilet. Or put them in a garbage uh, bag and throw them over in the trash bin. I don't understand that mentality. That's demonic. I said that is demonic. That is not the way God made a woman. God made women to love their children. Amen. I said amen. So man and woman, one is not... I need to be careful here. I said that a while ago. Man is not superior in the, in the, in, in the sphere of importance. He is equal because God made them male and female, created He them. Now, a woman, now, y'all, everybody here knows Shirley Lester? Everybody here, raise your hand, you know Shirley Lester. Boy, she's been here so many times, I can't count them all. But when she was here, I think it, last time or time before last, she got to preaching about the home one time, and she said, Amen. Little girls are born bossy. <laughs> oh, I see some of y'all guys are smiling. She said, but that has to be dealt with at an altar of prayer. Amen. Amen. And God moves in mysterious ways His wonders to perform. A man and woman, as far as importance, is equal as far as importance. They just have a different role model in the home. Amen. Come on here. She is to take care of the home and the children. He's to, come on, are y'all still with me? He's to work and labor with his hands and provide for that family and protect that family. Amen. That family is his castle. It's his responsibility. Now, I, I, I know I'm getting on dangerous territory here. Amen. It's his responsibility when, amen, uh, 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 John Doe out yonder starts to, amen, make time with his wife. It's his responsibility to step up. We got a lot of dumb men. Your eyes, fella. I lost y'all. Hey man, can't you see what the devil's doing? Hey man, trying to destroy your home. And he's good at it. He knows how to do it. Say, hey man, boy, oh boy, I'm in trouble here tonight. I'm talking to y'all about God's order. Hey man, for the family. 
Amen. When God put His order in for the family, as long as it works right in the order that God gave, amen, for man to live in, there's peace. There's peace. But you let it get out of shelter one way or the other, amen, and there's nothing but chaos and fussing and fighting, amen, and screaming and hollering. That's not God's will. Hello? Amen. Now, turn over if you can. If I haven't scared you to death yet. Chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean it was brother Adam and sister Adam? Is that what the book said? Amen. Their name, plural. Their name was Adam. That's the way God made it. Now, I want to tell you, we're living in generation now when a girl marries a young fella, she wants to keep her maiden name. That's a prescription for a divorce. Sorry if that offended you, but it's right. Amen. Amen. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. It is not your money and my money. Wow. I didn't think you'd dare say that, Brother Savage. I know it. I kind of cringed when I said it myself. <laughs> It's our money. <clears throat> I wish, I just wish that every one of y'all tonight could take turns and come up here and look out there. <clears throat> Help me, Lord. But I want to tell you. Now, Let's go back to the beginning. When God created Adam and Eve, He gave them superiority and dominion over everything that, that God made and created with the exception of one. That was a tree of what? Come on. Talk to me. Of good and evil. Don't mess with that tree of knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you partake of that tree of knowledge of good and evil, that's the day you're going to die. Now I want to tell you, amen, there is, there is the mentality in our generation, in, in, in the world, not just America, in the world, we want to mix black and white. To where it is now, yeah, until it's, it's gray. When you mix good and evil together, amen, you're heading, amen, to be ex uh, exited out of the Garden of Eden. Amen. As long as they abstain. Come on here. God wants you to know what evil is since we've been saved, that you no longer partake of it. But when you want to mix good and evil together, amen, and make it a way of life, I want to tell you, you're heading for backsliding Amen. And your home will disintegrate. Help me here. Now, amen. In the beginning, the Bible said that God called their name Adam. As Brother Adam and Sister Adam. Oh, that's touchy ground right now. I felt somebody's cool spirit come up here. Is Brother Adam... And Sister Adam. I'm going to say it again. It was Brother Adam and Sister Adam. Now, Adam named her Eve. Come on here. Because she became the mother of all living. But in the beginning, it was Brother Adam and Sister Adam. And when a... Help me, Lord, I'm in trouble. He meant when a woman no longer wants to be... 
lost in the identity of her husband. She wants her own way. She wants equal rights amendment. Hello here. She... Boy, y'all are looking pitiful. I didn't know it was that bad on you. Amen. When, when, when Eve wanted her own identity, she was no longer satisfied. After she ate the tree of knowledge, she was no longer satisfied in, at, <coughs> at being Sister Adam. Amen. So Adam called her Eve. Now she's got her own identity. But I want to tell you, the day came when Eve regretted ever taking the first bite of that tree of fruit. I lost y'all here this morning, this evening. But I want to tell you, man and woman must lose thy, their identity together. It is brother and sister savage. It's not no longer Shirley Sanders. Boy, I need to be careful there. It is sister savage. How come? Now, I want to show you something. She is blessed because she is part of me. And I'm part of her. You hear me? Amen. And when God blesses L.D. Savage, He blesses her. Amen. Amen. And she, she has taught in a lot of ladies' meetings across this country. Amen. From various times uh, through the years, and uh, are y'all still with me? And and I don't I don't want to say this in a I don't want to say this in a rough way, but she became more popular out there among church folks and holiness people because she run around with a guy by the name of L. D. Savage. Yeah, that's right. Her identity was lost. She was, they never, they never put on the bulletin, Shirley Sanders is going to be the speaker today. It's always Shirley Savage. Her identity is lost in mine. And I want to tell you, let's go real close with this tonight. When we as Christians and church members, amen, we get saved. We must lose our own identity into Him. We are no longer our own. We've been bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus is no longer I that lives, but it is Christ that liveth within me, the hope of glory. He's the head. Praise God. Somebody say amen. And I'm bone of His bone and flesh of His flesh. I'm in the church. And he's the head. Praise God. Amen. So I, 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 there's so many things. Whoo! I'm in overtime already tonight. But there's so many things on this great subject that I wanted to share with you tonight. Amen. That we are living in a generation in our American culture where the home, the family, is being totally destroyed. Amen. Because she wants to be him. And him wants to be Shem. I can't believe I said that. Hello. And we're twisting the roles that God made. Amen. Amen. Help me here. I want to tell you, when little Junior can't get his way from Daddy, Mama thinks with her heart. If you don't remember nothing else I say tonight, write this down. A woman thinks with her heart. A man thinks with his head. And that's, that's not putting one more important than the other. It's just the way God made it. And when, when homes function the way God makes it, it works right. Amen. And when Junior can't get his way with Daddy, he goes to, to Mama. Mama, I want to go over to Johnny. House tonight, my friend. Amen. And daddy won't let me go. Can I go? Can I go, Mama? 
And then there's fussing going on between mom and daddy. Don't mess with my little Johnny. Woo! But I want to tell you, God made it to where the man should be, ought to be the head of that house. And what for whatever reason, for whatever reason, and it really doesn't matter. But sometimes, amen. Some, I, 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 am, I, am I boring you tonight? Amen. Sometimes you don't always know why you said no. But you felt like as husband and father, no. Not this time. Nothing wrong with going to Susie Q's house over there, but not this time. Why? Don't know. Only thing is, I just don't feel it's the right time for you to go. And that needs to be the bottom line. And I've seen children put mom and daddy at odds at each other until they get to fussing and to fussing and to fussing and to fussing until little Johnny finally gets his way and goes wherever he wants to go or do whatever he wants to do because mom and daddy's at each other now. Boy, I lost you all there. God established the home and the family in an order, in a way that, amen, he said it will work if you do it this way. And it won't work if you do it any other way. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We, we read to you out of these verses. And uh, let's see here. Where, where do we need to go next? Uh, in in uh, First Peter, First Peter chapter three, First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three, starting at verse one. It's plating, not plating. Amen. No, hold it right there. I want you to stop right there. Amen. Now, you need to understand that uh, he's talking to the wives to be in subjection to their husbands. That goes against the grain of the natural man. Or the natural instinct in, I want to be, hello here. If any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Now there are a lot of men that are not saved, but their, their wives are. Amen. And I know a lot of, I know a lot of situations Preaching these many years where a husband was won to God by his wife's wonderful example that she set. Amen. And, and, and a man that's got a good wife, a godly wife, he may not agree with her when she's talking to him. 
But you let somebody else say something bad about his wife and he'll corner them right now. I know my wife. I live with her. I lost y'all here. Amen. So the wives are in subjection. Somebody said, why do you always talk about being in subjection? Being in subjection to your husband. Being in subjection to Jesus. Being in subjection to the Holy Ghost. Being in in subjection, being in subjection to the preacher, being in subjection, being in subjection. I want to tell you, that's the best way in the world to get what you need. Sometimes God doesn't, God doesn't want your money as much as He wants your heart. Come on here. And if He gets all of your heart, He's got all of your money. Because you are in subjection to Him. Whatever He wants in your life. God is the most important thing in any family. The family, the family altar is almost a thing of the past generation. Bible reading and prayer in the family is almost unheard of. But it still works. I said it still works. Amen. Now, he, he talked to, first of all, in Peter. Peter, in his writing, talked to the, to the women about being in subjection to their husband. But now, amen, let's turn it just a little bit in verse 7. Read. I want you to underline that last phrase. That your prayers be not hindered. There's a lot of people's prayers are hindered because there's confusion between the husband and the wife. Fighting, fussing, screaming, hollering. You will not get a prayer through that way. Whoo! Likewise, likewise, husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving giving what? Giving honor unto her. Amen. She ought to be the queen in your home. Somebody say, Amen. What we've been we've been having a lot of fun this week about Brother uh, uh, Claude. Uh, he talks to his wife about seven or eight times a day on the cell phone. And 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 Brother uh, Brother Bruce said, when we get home, I'm going to see if he talks as sweet to her at home as what he did on the cell phone. He called her darling and sugar and baby and I love you and. Amen. Every time he talked to her, he told her how sweet she was and how wonderful she was and, and all this thing. Amen. And uh, help me here. I'm in trouble. I know it. But I will tell you, I got, I got tickled and amused. Amen. At, at him talking so sweet to his wife over the cell phone. Now, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I understand that. But I want to tell you, when you are at home, you ought to be just as sweet to her. Or shouldn't no, I'm gonna rephrase that. You ought to be sweeter to her in your home than you are to that waitress at the western restaurant. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hey Richard. Hey man, remember a bunch of this stuff. You might need it. <laughs> Amen. I'm just having fun. I'm enjoying life. But I want to tell you, I've seen men that were sweet to a waitress at a restaurant and come home and talk to their wife like she's a dog. That is not God's way for the home to be. If she fixed you a wonderful meal, amen, for supper, 
It ain't going to break your jaws to turn around and say, Thank you, darling. I appreciate that. That's a good meal. My wife fixed me some fried taters just recently, and I, I, I just bragged on them because I like fried taters. <laughs> but I want to tell you, we got so much confusion and fussing in the home these days that I'm surprised that the divorce rate's not more than what it is. Do you understand in American culture right now that 51% of all marriages wind up in divorce? Over half. That was not God's plan. Amen. Now, listen. God made a woman the way she is, to think the way she is about her children. And sir, you ought to be thankful that she loves her children instead of putting them in a garbage bag and throw them in the dumpster. Sometimes, Reality sets in sometimes. Amen. When, when mama goes to the store and she picks something off the shelf, and, and, and I've done this, the reason I'm saying this, and I said, what are you getting that for? We don't need that. But one of her grandchildren likes it. And you know what? I pay for it. <laughs> One fellow said, if mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. I understand that to, to a point. To a point. But there comes a time when a man has to be a man and make the right decisions in the home. And sometimes the wife does not always understand why that husband has made the choice and decision that he has made. But you need to make enough good decisions that she respects and honors your decision that you have made. Hello. Amen. I, I promise you, I promise you, my wife has not always liked the decisions that I've made. Neither have you ladies always liked your husband's decisions. But he's the husband. Now, if he's made a bad decision, If he has made a wrong decision, you don't come back and say, I know that was going to happen. <laughs> Easy, Devana. You're about to break your neck back there. <laughs> you see, that don't work either. If he's made the wrong decision, and it does happen, and I have to acknowledge I've made my share of wrong choices. Come on here. I suffer. She suffers. Our children suffer for a period of time. And I, I say, hey, old savage old man, that didn't work. Don't do that again. I'm talking about the order that God put the family into. And if... if if the decision and choice that that husband has made is not a good decision, only time will tell. And if it is a good decision, time tells that it's a good decision, and you don't always know until a lapse of time. But you have to realize, hey, this is the way God made us, and God put us together. Amen. And I'm going to be the wife and the mother that I need to be. And I'm going to be the husband and the father that I am to be. Amen. And the work of God is blessed. And the church is blessed. Are you all listening to me? Say amen. Now, I want to tell you. You need to be careful. Thank you, Sister Savage. <clears throat> uh, 
Peter said here, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Hello? Is anybody here saying that? That word weaker means the more delicate, the more frail, the more beautiful. All of that in ca- and, and capsipated right into this woman that you married. The weaker vessel. She must learn to lean on her husband's protection. Boy, I don't know what, what I need to say here other than just say what I need to say. But if that man is not caring for that family as he ought to, he'll answer to God. And if he's not doing his job or fulfilling his responsibility as he ought to, the whole family suffers. And the kingdom of God suffers. So, men, our responsibility is to... To be the spiritual leader in the home. Let me say that again. Men, our responsibility in the home is to be the spiritual leader in the home. If I could put it in Old Testament terms, to where maybe you may understand a little closer... We are to be the priest in our home. And when it comes to spiritual things, amen, in the house of God, the man ought to be the first one that says, hey, we're going to church tonight. When I was growing up, amen, I mean, it, us, us kids never, never, ever said, oh, we are going to church tonight. Oh man, it wasn't a question in our house whether we was going to church or not. It was, come on here, it was a settled fact. If it was church time, we was going to church. Somebody said, well, your daddy was a preacher. He wasn't always a preacher. The husband ought to be the leader of spiritual things in the home. He ought to be in the altar praying with his children when it comes time to pray. Anybody here? Amen. When it comes to spiritual things. Amen. Uh, There's been times that a good, godly man has had to say, Hey, family. Hey, wife. Hey, children. We're not going that way. No, 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 no. Uh, We don't act like that. No, no, no. We don't talk like that. Come on here. Somebody say amen. I lost some of y'all here this this evening. I know it. I I told brother, I told brother, I started to say brother Sap, but brother Sap, Amen. Uh, I told him full service tonight. I said we want a short preliminaries because it's going to take a while for me to get through. Amen. And if I'm boring you, praise God, jab your neighbor in the side. Amen. And see if they're awake. <clears throat> but I want to tell you, we have got to get our families together as God ordained the family to be together. I cannot go back and redo ten years ago. You cannot go back and rearrange things that happened twenty years ago. But you can, from this point on, be the family, the spiritual leader in your home that God intended for you to be. Well... Wife, you and the kids go on to church 
this morning. Um, but I noticed the grass needs cutting, so I'll stay home and mow the grass and y'all go in the church. You coward. It's your responsibility to be the spiritual leader in the home. And God's going to hold. Oh boy. God's going to hold that husband and man responsible on judgment day for how he led that family in spiritual things. That's an awesome responsibility. Just as much as I'm going to answer to God for the way that I lead this church and preach the gospel here, amen, and live the life in front of you, I'm going to answer to God for what I've done out of this pulpit. And husbands, you are going to answer to God for the way you treated that wife. Now, one time. Susie Q is cute as she is. Ought not to be the ruler in your house. Hello. Susie Q. Uh. I'm reminded of Brother Ralph Cox taught our grandchildren a little course about Susie Q. You remember, Marcia? Yeah, <laughs> that's Ralph Cox. But I want to tell you, Susie Q is pretty. Now, I want to tell you, I think little girls are beautiful. I do. I mean, I mean, I just. Guys, you're great. You're macho. You're a man. You're going to be. But there's something about the, the, how can I want to say, the fragileness of a girl. She's so cute. And I want to tell you. Daddy, Susie Q ought not to run your house. Uh, this is all practical stuff I know, and it's not spiritual as far as some of y'all are concerned, and you're bored, and I see that on your countenance. Amen. But I want to tell you, we've got to return to the order of, for the family that God put in his book. And when we follow God's order, amen, you talk about revival in a church. You talk about an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It will come, amen, when we get everything in the right perspective that God intended for it to be in his book. Amen. And I know, I know, I know where this country is heading, as it was in the days of Lot. So shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Come on here. Amen. Amen. The queers, excuse me for the vernacular there, they've taken over our society. And the day will come in Virginia, as it is in some other states already. Amen. That if you say anything against the gay community, Amen. You'll be liable for jail term. Amen. And I understand that. But I want to tell you, right is still right. Amen. Help me here. God intended for the family unit, amen, to be the most important in all the world. More important than Washington, D.C. Amen. More important than Putin from Russia. More important than any other nation. The home, this little unit that's called husband and wife and children. Amen. Amen. God made it to where that ought to be the institutions that, pro that promotes the church to go forward. Amen. And I know, I know, I, I, I must give honor tonight. There's some women that have done a wonderful job raising their children in the house of God without their husband's help. I take my hat off to them. They've done a superb job. Amen. And I'm grateful for what they've done. But that's not God's plan. God's plan is for the husband to be the spiritual leader in the house. Everybody stand.
I'm just about to run the battery down on this here. Mike. Amen. But I want to tell you, I feel like that what I've been talking to you tonight is such a needed subject in our American culture that we have forgotten what God said He wanted in this world. Amen. The order of the family. That's God's order. Come on, let's pray.